Dear students, welcome back to the Maths class. In today's class, let us continue the problems on the concept of vector product or cross product of two vectors. So, in this, in today's class, let us start with the problem where we need to find the area of parallel. Right? So, we already know what is the area of parallelogram. So, it is equal to magnitude of vector A cross vector B. So, first we need to find what is vector A and uh, cross vector because they have already given vector, vector A and vector B. So, vector A cross vector B in order to find the cross product between the two vectors. That is vector A and vector B. We know the formula. That is I tab, J tab and A tab in our first row. Then the scalar components of the first vector. Here the first vector is vector A. Scalar component of the first vector is 3, 1 and 4. So in our second row we are going to write the scalar component of the first vector. And in the third row we are going to write the scalar component of the second vector. So this is equal to I tab, J tab, K tab. Now, can you all tell me what is the scalar component of the first vector that is vector A? It is 3, 1 and 4. 3, 1 and 4. Next, what is the scalar component of the vector B? It is 1, minus 1 and 1. Therefore, this is equal to. Now, let us expand this along the first row. So, here is plus, minus, plus. So, plus I cut into what you should do. You should neglect the first row and the first column. So neglecting the first row and the first column. Now we should multiply 1 into 1. It is 1 minus. Next we have minus 1 into 4. Minus 1 into 4 is minus 4. Next it is minus J cap. So minus J cap. Now neglect the first row and the second column. So neglecting the first row and the second column. You have 3, 4, 1 and 1. Therefore, 3 into 1 is 3 minus 1 into 4 is 4. Next, coming for K component, so plus K into neglecting the first row and the third column. So this will be 3 into minus 1. 3 into minus 1 minus 3. Then we have 1 minus 1 into 1 it is 1. Therefore, this is equal to minus 2 minus plus 1 plus 4. Sorry, 1 plus 4. So it will give you. 5 I tab. Next we have 3 minus 4. It is minus 4. So minus 1 minus 1 into minus A tab. So plus J tab. Next minus 3 minus 1 minus 4 minus 4 again to plus K tab. It is minus 4 K tab. So now we have found the value of vector A cross vector B. But in order to find the area, what we require, we require the magnitude of vector A cross vector B. So let us find the magnitude. So magnitude of vector A cross vector B is equal to root of, so root of 5 square plus 1 square plus minus 4 whole square. I hope, why not everyone know how to find the magnitude of any given vector. And so this is equal to. Root of 5 square 25 plus 1 square 1 plus 4 square it is 16. So this is equal to root of, so you can have 25, 35, uh, 41, root 42. That's the area of the triangle. This is nothing but what? Area of a triangle, sorry, not triangle, area of a parallelogram. So area of a parallelogram is given by root. 42 square units. So next problem, here in the next problem again you need to find what? You need to find the area of the parallelogram where there are given two adjacent sides of the parallelogram. When two adjacent sides of the parallelogram is given, we know the formula. So area of parallelogram is equal to magnitude of vector A cross vector so again, first step is to find the cross product between the two vectors. So that is equal to write the formula I cap, J cap, K cap. So in the second row, the scalar component of the first vector, third row, the scalar component of the second vector. Therefore, this is equal to 
I cap, J cap, K cap, A one, A two, A three is equal to one minus one three. So you here you have vector A cap, I cap, minus J cap, plus three K cap, and vector B as two I cap minus seven J cap plus K cap. So the scalar component of vector B is two minus seven and one. So simplifying this, this is equal to so plus minus plus so plus I cap into what I should do? Neglecting the first row and the first column. So this will give you minus one into one it is minus one minus minus seven into three it is minus twenty one. Next minus J cap into so neglecting the first row and the second column. So you have one into one it is one minus two into three. It is six. Next plus K cap. So here you need to neglect the first row and the third column. So neglecting the first row and the third column. So neglecting this, you have one into minus seven. It is minus seven minus two into minus one. It is minus two. So this is equal to minus and minus plus. So plus twenty one minus one. It will give you. Plus twenty one minus one, so it is twenty I cap. Next you have one minus six, it is minus five. Minus five into minus j plus five j cap. Next we have minus two minus this becomes plus minus seven plus two. So this will be equal to five minus five j cap. So what is the next step? We need to find the magnitude in order to find the area of the parallelogram. So magnitude of Vector A cross vector B is equal to root of twenty square plus pi square plus pi minus of pi square whole square. Therefore, this is equal to four hundred plus twenty five plus twenty five, which is equal to four hundred and fifty. Okay, so the area of the parallelogram is given by what? Four hundred and fifty square units. Area of parallelogram. This question will be asked for two marks: finding the area of the triangle and also finding the area of the parallelogram. Next, let us move on to the next problem. Next problem: we need to find the area of the rectangle, and we all know that every rectangle is a parallelogram. So we are going to use the same formula for parallelogram here. So. Area of rectangle is equal to magnitude of vector A cross vector B. So here, if I take this as a rectangle, okay. So if this is your rectangle, then A, B, C, D. I'll call this as vector B and this as vector A. So this angle is ninety degrees. Therefore, here I first find what is vector AB. So vector AB is nothing but vector OB minus vector A. In order to find vector AB, first we should know what are the position vector. So the position vector is given. So vector OA is equal to minus I cap plus half J cap plus four J cap, and vector OB is equal to I cap plus half J cap. Plus four k cap and vector OC is equal to I cap minus half j cap plus four k cap and vector OD is equal to minus I cap minus half j cap plus four k cap. Okay. So here, using this, let us find what is vector A, which is given by vector OB minus vector OB. So vector OB, vector OB is I cap plus half J cap plus four K cap minus vector OA, which is minus I cap plus half J cap plus four K cap. So this is equal to now I cap. There is one I cap. Here it is minus into minus plus one plus one. It is two I cap. Next we have half J cap minus half J cap, so zero J cap. Next four K cap minus four K cap plus zero K cap. So we found what is vector AD. Next we need to find what is vector AD, which is given by vector OD minus vector OA. So what is the vector OD? It is minus I cap minus half J cap plus plus. Four K cap minus vector OA, which is minus I cap plus half J cap plus four K cap. Therefore, 
is equal to minus 1 plus 1, 0 I cap, then we have minus half, plus, uh, minus half, minus half, that is 1 J cap, then plus 4 K cap, minus 4 K cap, 0 K cap. Now we know what is vector AD and what is vector AD. Now let us substitute in the formula, therefore, area of parallelogram here is a rectangle. Okay, so area of a rectangle is equal to magnitude of vector AB cross vector D, which is magnitude of vector A cross vector D. So here we have called vector AB as vector D and vector AD as vector B. Therefore, this is equal to, we need to find the magnitude. So let us find the magnitude for the uh, sorry, find the cross product. So let us first find the cross product here. So cross product of vector AB cross vector AC is equal to determinant of I, J, K. And in the first, second row, you need to write the similar component of the first vector, which is 2, 0, 0. And in the third column, you should write the scalar component of the second vector. So, second vector scalar component is 0, minus 1, and 0. Therefore, simplifying this, so I cap into. So, what you should do here, you should neglect the first row and the first column. So, if you neglect the first row and the first column, you will have 0 into 0 into 0, minus, minus 1 into 0 into again, 0. Next, minus J cap. Now, neglect the first row and the second column. So, 0 into 0, 0, minus again 0 into 0 into 0. Next, plus K cap into. Now, neglect the first row and the third column, 2 into minus 2, it is minus 2, minus 0. Therefore, you will get 0 I cap plus or minus 0 J cap, then minus 2 K cap. Okay? We need to find the magnitude of this in order to find its area. So, magnitude of vector A B cross vector A is equal to root of 0 square plus 0 square plus minus 2 the whole square. That is root 4 which is equal to 2. Therefore, here magnitude of vector A B cross vector A is equal to what? That is equal to 2. Therefore, the area of the rectangle is given by 2. Here, if you can even find, okay, how we know that magnitude of, if I consider vector A cross vector B definition, which is given by magnitude of vector A, magnitude of vector B sin theta, okay, into enter. If I take the full magnitude, if we take the full magnitude, then we find magnitude of vector A cross vector B, which is equal to magnitude of vector A, magnitude of vector B, sin theta into n cap. What is n cap? You written out the vector, when I take the magnitude, then it is equal to 1. So this is equal to, what is our vector A? Vector A is vector B. So you need to find the magnitude of this separating. So what is the magnitude of this separating? This is equal to 4. Uh, magnitude of, uh, sorry, root 4 is nothing but Okay, so to take the magnitude of the vector A, this is equal to root of 2 square plus 0 square plus 0 square. What is that? That is again equal to 2 into. Now, magnitude of vector B, this is one calling it as vector B. Okay, so magnitude of this will be equal to root of 0 square plus 1 square plus 0 square. Again, it is equal to 1. Now, what is the angle here? The angle between the two adjacent sides is nothing but 90 degree, here you get it as sine 90. What is the value of sine 90? It is equal to 1. Therefore, this is equal to 2 into 1 into 1, which is again equal to 2. Either you can follow this method or this method. As you already remember this formula, you can try, uh, you can solve the problem with using the formula itself. Next problem, we need to find the angle between the two vectors, vector A and vector B. They are given in terms of vector product. So, we should use this formula. 
which will be in the form of sine theta. And then given that magnitude of vector A is equal to 3 and magnitude of vector B is equal to 2 by 3. And they have also told that vector A cross vector B is a unit vector. So when they have given vector A cross vector B is a unit vector, this states that the magnitude of this is equal to 1. Okay, with this, the other two data which is given is magnitude of vector A is 3 and magnitude of vector B is equal to root 2 by 3. So the angle between the two vectors is given by sin theta is equal to magnitude of vector A cross vector B divided by magnitude of vector A into magnitude of vector B. Let us substitute the values. So this is equal to 1 divided by 3 into root 2 by 3. So 3, 3 get cancelled. We get 1 by root 2. This is the value of sine. Now, you people tell me, what is the value? For what value of sine you get 1 by root 2? It is sine 45 degrees. Therefore, sine theta is equal to, this 1 by root is nothing but sine 5 by 4. Sine so therefore, theta will be equal to what? Theta is equal to pi by 4. So this is how we find the angle between the two vectors in terms of vector product. Next, they will ask us to show that vector A minus vector B cross vector A plus vector B is equal to 2 times vector A cross vector B. So let us consider the LHS here. That is vector A minus vector B cross vector A plus vector B. So we have considered the LHS. So let us find, so what I am going, I am first finding the product between A and A. So vector A cross vector A. Next, vector plus B plus is plus. Next, vector A cross vector B. Vector A cross vector B. Next, the second term here. So minus A2 plus is minus vector B cross vector A. Vector B cross vector A. Okay. Next, after that, again, this will be minus A2 plus minus vector B cross vector B. Okay. Now, what is vector A cross vector A? So here, we all know that we should remember the observations which have given. Vector A cross vector A is equal to 0. So if vector A cross vector A is 0, same way, vector B cross vector B will be equal to what? 0. Okay, then we have plus vector A cross vector B. In cross product, we know that the cross product is not commutative. Therefore, vector A cross vector B will be equal to minus of vector B cross vector K or vector B cross vector K is equal to minus of vector A cross vector B. Do you remember this? So I have already told you this is an important observation. Now I am going to use this observation. So here B cross A, B cross A, vector B cross A can be written as minus of vector K cross vector, uh, vector B. So minus of minus of vector K cross vector B. Okay. So this is equal to zero I leave it. K cross B minus into minus plus A cross B. So what is A cross B? A cross B it is equal to two times vector A cross vector B. So this is our required Problems we need to find the value of lambda and mu. So they have given that 2 i cap plus 6 j cap plus 27 k cap cross i cap plus lambda j cap plus mu k cap is equal to 0 vector here. They have given it as it is equal to 0 vector. So 0 vector means it is equal to 0 i cap plus 0 j cap plus 0 k cap. So for the solution, I am considering the entire thing. So 2 i cap plus 6 j cap plus 27 k cap cross i cap plus lambda j cap plus mu k cap is equal to 0 vector. So this is nothing but there are two vectors in its component form. 
So when the two ventricles are given in its component form, we know how to find the back of the cross product between the two ventricles. We find using the determinant. So I am using the determinant. So I cap, J cap, K cap. So in the second row, you write the scalar component of the first vector, which is given by 2, 6, and 27. In the third, we should write the scalar component of the second vector, 1, lambda, and mu. Which is equal to 0 vector that is given, therefore I write it as 0 i cap plus 0 j cap plus 0 k cap. Okay, let us simplify this. So, plus minus plus, so it is plus i cap into 2. So, neglect this and this one, 6 mu minus lambda into 27, so 27 lambda, then minus j cap into 2, 2 into mu, minus 1 into 27, it is 27, plus k cap into, now, this and this will be neglected, so you have 2 into lambda is 2 lambda, minus 1 into 6 is 6, therefore, this is equal to, 0 i cap plus 0 j cap plus 0 k cap. Simplifying this, therefore, here, in order to simplify, so now, in order to find the value of lambda and mu, you should equate. That is, i component with i component, j with j and k with k. So, equating that, I'm equating the i component with the i component. From the LHS, I'm equating it to RHS. So here, what is the i component? It is 6 mu minus 27 lambda. 6 mu minus 27 lambda is equal to, what is the i component in the RHS? Is equal to 0. Okay, similarly, let us uh, Similarly, let us equate for the g component. That is, here, given you should consider the sign. So minus of 2 mu minus 27 is equal to 0. Next, equating the k component, which is 2 lambda minus 6 is equal to 0. So we need to find the value of lambda and mu. So first I go to this one. 2 lambda minus 6 is equal to 0. So I can write this as 2 lambda is equal to 6 or lambda is equal to 6 by 2. Hence, the value of lambda is equal to 3. So we found what is the value of lambda. Next, I'll consider this here with this also. Now what you can do is substitute the value of lambda here and then find the mu. Here, by this method also, you can solve. First, I'm going to multiply this minus sign inside. 2 mu plus 27 is equal to 0. Therefore, minus 2 mu is equal to minus 27. Minus get cancel. Mu is equal to 27 divided by So, these are the values of lambda and mu. Next problem, let me go that. A unit vector, vector A, meets an angle of pi by 3 with i cap, pi by 4 with j cap, and an acute angle beta with k cap. Then find the beta and hence the components of A. We need to find two values, that is theta and the components of K. First thing that given that vector A is what kind of vector? It is a unit vector. So, since vector A is a unit vector, what does this imply? This implies that magnitude of vector A is equal to 1. Okay? But here we need to find even the components of vector A. So, let vector A be equal to A1i cap plus A2j cap plus a b. For now, we don't know what is the component of vector A. So, I am writing it as A1, A2 and A. Next, what do I give us? I will give us that. Vector A makes an angle of pi by 3 with i cap. Okay? So, here we are going to use the formula cos theta which is equal to vector A dot vector B by magnitude of vector A into magnitude of vector B. Here you have two vectors. They are telling that we have two vectors. The angle made between these two vectors is pi by three. What are those two vectors? One is vector A. So the first vector is vector A only. What is the other vector? The other vector is vector B is nothing 
what is your uncapped parenteric heart? Vector A makes an angle of 580 with what? With another vector which is uncapped. So, now this will be equal to cos. The angle made by vector A will uncap this 5 by 3. So, vector A is same as vector A dot the other vector is uncapped by magnitude of vector A into magnitude of uncapped. Okay, I'm just applying the formula. So let us simplify. This is equal to cos 5 by 3. That is cos 60. This is nothing but 1 by 2. Okay, this is equal to C. Cos 5 by 3 value and writing it as 1 by 2. So what is vector A? It is A1 angle plus A2 theta plus A3 dot I cap. Okay, there is no J component and K component. Whole divided by magnitude of vector A. We know that vector A is a unit vector. So the magnitude of vector A is 1 into what is the magnitude of I cap? I cap is what? It is a unit vector along the x axis. So I cap is again, it is equal to 1. So A1 into here it is 1. A1 into 1, it is A1. I cap dot I cap is equal to 1. This problem is more relevant to the uh, dot product than cross product. Okay? So A1 into 1 is A1. Next A2 into there is no J component, which it is understood it is 0. So J, uh, A2 into 0 is 0 and A3 into 0 is 0. So we get only A1 in the numerator divided by 1 is equal to 1 by 2. Therefore, from this I got 1 by 2 is equal to. One. Okay, next. This is for the first thing. That is, A makes an angle of 5 by 3 with I. Now, next, the same vector A is making an angle of 5 by 4 with J cap. This, see here, this is your x axis, y axis, and z axis. You have a vector called vector A. It is making an angle of 5 by 3 with I cap. 5 by 4 with J cap and uh, some acute angle theta with J cap. Okay, so with each vector, let's first coordinate this vector, this vector vector A, and this is the other vector we have considered. We found the angle between them in order to find the first component of the vector A. Now, what we are doing? Vector A and we are taking J. The angle between them is 5 by 4. Now what we get? We get the second component of the vector that is A2. Now let us find it out. So, again I am going to apply the same formula. But can we write it directly? So here when, when I say vector A means an angle of 5 by 4 with J cap cos 5 by 4 will be equal to vector A dot J cap by magnitude of vector A into magnitude of J cap. Now, see here, vector A is A1 I cap plus A2 J cap plus A3 J cap dot J cap by magnitude of vector A is 1. Magnitude of J cap is 1. Therefore, this gives you what? Only A2. Okay, because A1 into there is no I component dot to find the dot product. So, it is A1 into 0. A2 into 1, therefore A2. Again, A3 into 0, therefore it will be 0. What is cos 5 by 4? Cos 5 by 4 is 1 by 2. Therefore, we got what is A2. Next, we need to find A3. Okay, so that is vector A makes an angle theta with K cap. So cos theta is equal to vector A dot K cap by magnitude of vector A is magnitude of K cap. So this, can I write it directly as A3? Okay, or else 
Let us divide by a one i cap plus a two j cap plus a three j cap dot vector p cap divided by one into one. Therefore, again a one into zero zero, a two into zero zero. So you have only a three. A three is equal to what we got? Cos theta. But here we need to find theta. Now, how to find this angle theta? We have a clue where we are told that magnitude. of vector a is equal to 1 so we know that magnitude of vector a is equal to 1 this implies root of how we find the magnitude we find the magnitude as root of x square plus y square plus z square so we have root of a1 square plus a2 square plus a3 square a1 square plus a2 square plus a3 square is equal to 1 Now let us start substituting. Now we know what is the value of a one. A one is one by two. So one by two whole square, one by four. Next a two is one by root two. A two square becomes one by root two whole square. It is one by two. Plus a three square. A three we got it as cos theta. So this becomes cos square theta is equal to one. So simplifying this, therefore. When I square it on both sides, now what I'm doing? I'm squaring on both the sides of the equation, so we get one by two plus one by two plus cos square theta is equal to one. So taking the LCM for the first two terms, what is the LCM term? It will be equal to four. Therefore, you have one plus two. It is three by four. So three by four plus cos square theta is equal to one. So next, therefore, cos square theta is equal to one minus three by four. So again, four is less than four minus three. It is one, one by four. This is cos square theta. So we need to find what cos theta. Cos theta is equal to one by two. Okay, cos theta is equal to one by two. Now. But we need to find even theta value. We want to know what is cos theta. Find theta. So tell me, for what value of cos you get one by two? It is equal to pi by three. Therefore, cos theta is equal to cos pi by three. Hence, the value of theta is equal to pi by three. So our first question is solved. Finding the value of theta. What is the second question? We need to find the components of a theta. So we have taken a one, a two, and a three as the components of the vector. By solving, we already got what is a one and a two. What is the a three term? So here, when I solve for a three, I got a three is equal to cos theta, and we got cos theta is equal to what? So I can tell a three is equal to cos theta, which is equal to one by two. So I can tell a three is equal to one by two. Therefore, components. Oh, vector a. That is, vector a is equal to a one i cap plus a two j cap plus a three j cap will be equal to a one is one by two into i cap, a two is one by two into j cap, and a three is equal to cos theta, and then cos theta is equal to one by two j cap. So the components of the vector a is one by two, one by two. So here in the next problem, they have given that vector a or vector b is zero, and given vector a cross vector b is zero. What can you conclude about both the vectors, vector a and vector b? So they have given that vector a or vector b is equal to zero. We have seen in the dot product when the two vectors, when we find the dot product between the two vectors, the result is zero. This is possible in two cases. This implies that either when vector a is a zero vector or vector b is a zero vector. That is, if any one of the vector is zero. What is the other case which we have seen? That is, if the two vectors are perpendicular, then also we have we can see that the dot product between the two vectors will be zero. Or vector a is perpendicular to vector. So either the vectors should be perpendicular, or out of the two vectors, one vector should be zero. Okay. 
So after this, there will also be one that vector A cross vector A is zero. Here also we have seen two cases where the first case is either one of the vectors should be a zero vector, or what is the other condition? Uh, the two vectors should be parallel. That is, vector A should be parallel to vector B. Now they have given that vector A dot vector B is also zero, and even vector A cross vector B is zero. Is it possible? Can at the same time the vector be perpendicular to the other vector, and the same vector is parallel to other vector? It is not possible. So we can conclude that vector A dot vector B is equal to zero. And vector A cross vector B is equal to zero does not hold simultaneously. Okay, it means it cannot. It is not possible for any two vectors to be parallel and perpendicular at a same time. Okay, next problem. So here, if either one of the vectors is a zero vector. Then vector A cross vector B is zero. Is the converse true? We need to check whether the converse is true or not. Justify your answer with example. First, we need to write the converse statement. Okay. So converse statement is. So what is the converse statement? If vector A cross vector B is zero, then either Vector A is a zero vector, or vector B is a zero vector. Let us check by taking an example. Now here I consider the vector A. I take it as I cap plus J cap plus E, and I consider another vector, vector B, which is two I cap plus two J cap plus two E. Now let us find the cross product between the two vectors and see whether it is equal to zero or not. So vector A cross vector B is equal to I cap J cap K cap. Next you have one one one, then two two two. It is the scalar component of the second vector and the first vector. So this is equal to I cap into one into two. It is two minus two into one. It is two. Then minus J cap into again one into two. It is two minus two into one. It is again two plus A cap into one into two, two minus two into one, it is two. So if you see, we get zero I cap plus zero J cap plus zero J cap, which is nothing but a zero vector. So from this, what you can conclude is, though vector A and vector B are non-zero vectors, but still we get vector A and vector B as zero vector. So If vector A and vector B is a zero vector, then it need not be that is, the uh, vector A is uh, will not be equal to zero, or vector B is not equal to zero. We still have a chance where the both the vectors are non-zero vectors. We still get the cross product between the two vectors is zero. Therefore, I can conclude that the converse is not true. Okay, but this may happen. If either one of the vector is zero, definitely the cross product between those two vectors will be a zero vector. But there is a possibility where if uh, the two vectors are non-zero vectors, we we'll still we get a cross product to be equal to zero. So this concludes the problem on vector product or cross product of the 